consistent work they continue to do on this very important part of the Munich Security Conference. I remember very well my own participation in the first meeting of young leaders back in 2009, as you said. And I, before I go to my uh, uh, remarks, I would like to say that one participating in such event, uh, the, the, the margins of the bigger conference uh, youth platform, usually one thinks, oh, the real life is there and, and really waits for the time when he will move there. But as you all naturally progress to be part of the Munich Security Conference, I absolutely assure you, you will be missing this very unique atmosphere of open and, and, and uh, very direct exchange and, and interaction. And I think this is a, a best part maybe of, of this initiative. And while uh, moving up in career is a very natural development for young and talented like those gathered in this room, obviously aging and, and the disqualifying for age reasons for the youth platforms is a <laughs> natural byproduct of that. So please enjoy Munich Young Leaders and, and enjoy this time here. It's really great. It's, it's a really great initiative. I will talk today about the regional dynamics in Eurasia and Armenia's role or place in it. Armenia's case, as Nora uh, rightly mentioned, is unique in terms of successfully leveraging uh, concurrent integration processes in Eurasia and Euro-Atlantic formats. As many of you have heard, Armenia is an ancient civilization with its first statehood dating back to the 9th century before Christ, and it was also the first nation to adopt Christianity as state religion back in 301. Uh, in a series of consecutive rises and falls of Armenian states interrupted for a few centuries between Middle Ages and our days, Armenia has, through its own bitter lessons of history, fully explored the disparaging <coughs> impact of clashes between mighty and powerful around it. Wars and concurrent divisions and reunifications of its territories by Romans and Parthians, Byzantines, Sassanids, Ottoman and Russian empires have taught us a lesson once and forever. We do not seek for benefits in confrontations of regional and global powers. Uh, we know for sure that dialogue and open exchange with all, exploration of mutually ben mutual benefits and co-creation uh, co are the road to prosperity and stability. Now, after regaining our independence 25 years ago, this knowledge and experience have evolved into our foreign and defense policies aimed at fostering regional and trans-regional cooperation as the only possible way to solve ongoing disputes and ensure lasting peace. In context of our current discussion, those policies can be focused through paradigm of leveraging our membership in the Eurasian Economic Union and Collective Security Treaty Organization with open and engaged partnership with Euro-Atlantic structures. In the heart of it is our plea for security, prosperity, and regional order based on a consistent system of principles and values. I would like to turn now to each of these directions. First, Eurasian integration format. For Armenia, it is based on three major pillars. Our membership in Eurasian Economic Union, Collective Security Treaty Organization, as well as bilaterally strategic alliance with Russia. Membership in the Eurasian Economic Union serves mostly economic ends, like free flow of goods, services, labor, and capital, providing vast markets for Armenian goods and labor force, and attracting more foreign direct investment to Armenia. Among Eurasian Economic Union members, Armenia is uh, recognized by international rating agencies as the easiest place to do business with uh, a lot of mechanisms for uh, facilitating such uh, entrepreneurship. And therefore, all those investors who look into the possibility in Eurasian markets in a wider sense, in, in, in Russia, in Belarus, in Kazakhstan, very often turn to Armenia as a good platform to, to launch their businesses and enterprises to assure an outreach to a wider market. Collective Security Treaty Organization is more of a security tool, allowing for intensive military-to-military -military cooperation in all spheres, from military research and development to mutual access to military industries in other member states, from development of peacekeeping capacity to unified efforts in com combating terrorism, drug, and uh, human trafficking. <coughs> CSTO has its own equivalent of what is known as Article 5 of NATO agreement, attack on one is attack on all. And uh, at the same time, being a relatively young organization, CSTO is still in process of developing its soft power tools, continues to enhance its human and institutional capital. Our bilateral relations with Russia, as I had mentioned, of strategic partnership character, are multidimensional and include all spheres from intensive political dialogue at top level to interaction in literally all fields of life. 
Russia, along, along with France and United States, serves as a co-chair of the OSC Minsk Group, the only international format dealing with Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Attack on one is attack on both is also a bilateral arrangement with, uh, between Armenia and Russia, incorporated in our defense treaties. In practical terms, this commitment of Russia is materialized in the form of a Russian military base stationed in the territory of Armenia, as well as joint task force and joint air, uh, air defense system. Now, the second part of the sandwich, as Nora uh, uh, labeled it, is partnership with uh, Euro-Atlantic formats. In this direction, we also base our policies on three main pillars, the bilateral relations with the United States and European nations, active involvement in Eastern partnership of the European Union, and our continued interaction with NATO through Partnership for Peace Initiative, as spelled out in our individual uh, partnership action plan. In our bilateral ties with the United States and European nations, we build up on a long history of ties and connections. Those connections are rooted in coinciding civilizational and value-based approaches and are reinforced by presence of huge Armenian communities in those countries. As a matter of fact, those ties were strong enough to persist even despite the strong Iron Curtain isolating us in Soviet period. With European Union, we have actively engaged immediately after Armenia secured its accession to the Council of Europe, having yet completed the first round of key democratic reforms. Since we looked at European Union as a tool to continue the reforms to uh, the next stage and to basically use best of the experience gained and lessons learned in the European countries in building up democratic institutions. Uh, since we have launched extensive dialogue with Brussels saying that furthering our democratic institutional building, we warmly welcome the platform of Eastern Partnership as a tool of more interactive dialogue as an avenue for furthering our interaction. We are now completing negotiations on a framework agreement that will be regulating Armenian EU relations for the future and hope to sign it this year. We have fully completed the round of work on readmission treaties with EU member states and have now secured visa facilitation instrument. Travel to Armenia for EU nations are, uh, is visa free and we will continue dialogue on human rights and democracy to prepare our own institutions as well as uh, justice system and, and, and uh, security control system to uh, step up and, and really move visa facilitation to visa liberalization or visa free travel in the foreseeable future. Armenia and Armenian enterprises enjoy GSP Plus, General System of Preferences, a trade regime offered by European Union to some countries which qualify for uh, certain criteria within their democratic reform and, and their achievements. And that really facilitates uh, uh, work for potential investors who want to do business in Armenia, also having access to European markets at, at a preferential rate. With NATO, as I have already mentioned, we work closely through an individual partnership action plan. Armenian peacekeepers participate in NATO-led missions mandated by United Nations in Afghanistan and Kosovo. In close cooperation with the United States government, we have built up substantial peacekeeping capacity and have installed humanitarian and mining mechanisms. We also continue to work with NATO and its member states on key matters such as strategic review process advancement of military education and military health care capabilities in Armenia. To sum up, Armenia has fully adopted the strategy of building up its capacities for multidimensional cooperation. While we neither make secret of our strategic partnership with Russia, nor shy away from it, we continue to be genuinely interested in all forms of cooperation with the West. And we do not want to get used to the idea that world again might be turning black and white. We think this to be a big blow to the advancement and development of, 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 of the world. In our national security strategy and military doctrine, as well as in practical politics, we find it crucial to build up and further deepen relations with our neighbors, particularly Georgia and Iran. With both nations, Armenia has had millennia long ties. In both countries, there are huge and long standing Armenian diasporas. With Georgia, another ancient Christian nation in the region, Armenia has probably one of the oldest in the world history state borders that still stands. Moreover, there is no single case in those thousands years of common history when Armenia and Georgia had confronted each other. Our disputes usually narrow down to whose food is better and whose children are more talented and who plays better jazz and other things like that, which are very enjoyable. Um, Despite existing substantial differences in our foreign policy plans and rules, we choose to assure our security. We share clear understanding 
the security and stability in our region of South Caucasus is deeply interconnected. We therefore work closely to address existing challenges and risks. And I was really happy to see such mutual understanding during my recent official trip to Georgia, uh, working with my colleagues, uh, with all uh, uh, decision makers in that country. And I really felt strong about this commitment to a united system of security in the region of South Caucasus on part of Georgian authorities. With Iran, we also have thousands of years of common history. That history had its ups and downs, wars and religious uh, uh, wars for religious conversion, absorption and loss of part of former Armenian states, encouragement for Armenians to immigrate into Iran from other nearby countries, and establishment of separate Armenian communities with uh, Iran in middle within Iran in Middle Ages. Occasional swap of Armenian territories between Iran and Russia as a result of Russian-Persian wars in the 18th and 19th centuries. Ever since Armenia re-established its long-lost statehood in 1991, Iran has clearly demonstrated its readiness for a true friendship, and we were able to develop neighborly relations based on mutual respect. Iran has adopted a very balanced position on, on Nagorno-Karabakh conflict and, has, and uh, continues to do everything needed to assist the search for a just solution. Iran has demonstrated its deep respect to the Armenian cultural heritage on its territory and worked <coughs> extensively with the Armenian Apostolic Church to include four of ancient Armenian monasteries in Iran into UNESCO World Heritage List. Indeed, relations between our two nations are an example of a dialogue of civilizations, religious tolerance, and mutual respect, which we really value and treasure. Such position is in a sharp contrast with position and behavior of another regional player and neighbor, Turkey, which continues to deny the undeniable internationally recognized fact of the Armenian genocide committed by Ottoman Turkey in 1915, and of, uh, continues to implement a full land blockade of Armenia, uh, which is aimed at uh, forcing Armenia to uh, unilaterally uh, uh, yield positions on uh, matters of <coughs> importance, including Nagorno-Karabakh issue. Uh, from uh, assassination of a prominent editor of the Armenian newspapers to daily meddling with the affairs of Armenian community life and manipulation of matters related to the Armenian patriarchy in Istanbul, Turkey uh, can, uh, furthers, uh, further fuels uh, the negative feelings and processes in the region. At our initiative, Turkey engaged a few years ago in talks on establishment of basic ties between our countries, which were adopted in form of internationally binding protocols signed in Zurich almost seven years ago. Immediately after signing, Ankara stepped back and tied Im implementation of those protocols with some preconditions, which were neither part of our talks nor related to the substance of the concluded treaties. Turkey continues to openly and one-sidedly support Azerbaijan on Nagorno-Karabakh issue by providing weaponry, military training, technology, and political support to Baku. Now this brings me to the last point in my introduction, but obviously not least important, the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. One can regularly hear that conflict being referred to as a territorial dispute between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And as a matter of fact, such labeling fully misrepresents the substance of the conflict. Nagorno-Karabakh conflict is a classical case of a fight of a nation for self-determination, a right clearly supported by rules and principles of international law and upheld by practice and history. Moreover, now when Nagorno-Karabakh has proved its capacity to build democratic institutions and has established an effective decision-making system of state governance, that fight becomes even more understandable considering the situation with human rights and democratic freedoms in Azerbaijan. People of Karabakh clearly state uh, people of Karabakh clearly states it has no intention to be part of that dictatorial system of governance. People of Nagorno-Karabakh, which has uh, imprinted its millennia-long residence in that territory, numerous medieval Armenian churches and monasteries, locally written manuscripts in towns and villages, has faced the injustice of Soviet national policy. By unilateral and illegitimate decision of Joseph Stalin, the region was attached to Azerbaijan while was given the right of autonomy supported by Soviet constitution in recognition of rights of its almost mono-ethnic Armenian population at that time. The same happened to another historic Armenian region of Nakhchevan, where throughout Soviet time, Armenian population was efficiently outnumbered and completely uh, disappeared by 1980, when the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict broke with a new force. 
Now, a few words to conclude before I, we go to discussion and Q&A on Nagorno-Karabakh proper. Uh, as I told you, the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, according to the rules of Soviet legislation and constitution, plead to the parliaments of Armenia and Azerbaijan and Soviet Union to allow peaceful transfer of territory from Soviet Azerbaijan to Soviet Armenia, where they felt they belong. And it was allowed by the Soviet legislation of the time. Unfortunately, this was reciprocated by Azerbaijan by use of force, first against civilians in different cities of Azerbaijan, <coughs> and then by mobilizing all the weaponry inherited from Soviet time with a wide-scale military attack on civil population. For more than three years, the uh, population of Nagorno-Karabakh, which is 150,000 people, had to basically fight uh, against this aggressive policy and war uh, launched by Azerbaijan, living under daily shellings and in the, in the shelters, and uh, bringing up their children in uh, absolute uh, disastrous conditions of war. But through mobilization and through the efforts, they were able to revert the course of that war. And despite the fact that uh, the war yielded dozens of thousands of uh, lives on both sides of the conflict, they were able to revert the situation. And Azerbaijan in 1994 offered a ceasefire uh, to, to, to get into peaceful negotiations on the settlement. Uh, the ceasefire was signed by three parties, Azerbaijan, Nagorno-Karabakh, and Armenia, as a guarantor of security of people of Nagorno-Karabakh. Unfortunately, ever since, the process that is led by, uh, by OSC Minsk Group uh, co-chaired, as I told you, by co-chaired countries, Russia, France, and the United States, has been uh, continuously yielding very little result because every time when we approach a, a situation where there are agreed principles, there is an agreed system of resolving the whole conflict with the final status of Nagorno-Karabakh, interim status, and the issues of return of territories and refugees, etc. Last moment, Azerbaijan steps back, leaving no room for uh, hope for a peaceful settlement of this conflict. Uh, it also efficiently rejects uh, trust building measures, which are extremely important because a conflict like this can be solved only if parties have sufficient mutual respect and, and trust that uh, agreements will be uh, respected after uh, an agreement is signed. But even on obvious things like uh, uh, agreement signed this year, last year, 2016, in Vienna and then in St. Petersburg, in presence of co-chair countries, and, and other international representatives are not complied with. And this leaves uh, everyone involved with a bigger field of mistrust and, and, and lack of uh, confidence that an agreement reached at the end of the day will be fully implemented. Uh, this is all also supported by very extensive hate speech at all levels of policy making in Azerbaijan, labeling Armenians living around the world as enemies of Azerbaijan. Uh, a very uh, intensive program of armament, which brings to an arms race in the region and militarization of the society in general. In April of 2016, there was a wide-scale provocation uh, by Azerbaijani armed forces at the line of contact, which claimed uh, uh, hundreds of lives of soldiers, about 120 on Armenian side and a few hundreds on Azeri side, and resulted in no basically result because there is no military way of solving this as co-chair countries have many times stated. So with this I will open up to the questions, answers, comments and we'll be happy to uh, give more detailed information if, if, if you are interested. Please.